Praise the Lord, church. Some prayer requests coming in, so I want to make sure I write those down. Can we all stand? Be thankful to be able to come to the house. It's mighty cold out there, but thank the Lord we've got heat in here. All right. And if you have a cell phone, please, if you would, mute it. Let's open with prayer. Thank God that we're here. Welcome his presence. Father, we are so thankful to be able to come into the house this morning. God, to lift you up and to glorify you, for truly you are worthy this morning. There's nobody like you, Jesus. You alone are worthy of that praise and that worship, so we've come to do just that. I ask, God, that there be a liberty of your presence. God, that you can touch and move and anoint in each and every individual as we lift you up and praise your name this morning. Pray. 
desire, no one else that can meet the needs that we have this morning. We want to pray for the family of Arnold Brewer. This is the pastor of where the singers used to attend. He passed away, so pray for his family, the Brewer family, that God would give comfort during this time of loss. We want to lift up Sister Simone. She's very ill, not able to be with us. Pray that God would touch her. We want to pray for Richie, the brother of Brother Mark Brockman, who's battling cancer and been given six months diagnosis. No one's higher. God is able. So let's pray for Richie. Let's also remember Sister Patty and Sister Denise. They're both facing surgeries upcoming. So keep them in your prayers. Pray for Montgomery. He's not feeling well this morning either. Needs a touch, physical touch. Sister Ruthie fell this morning, getting ready to come to church and um, put a big gash in her head. And she's at the ER right now. So let's pray for her that God will move and give her strength. Unspoken needs represented in the house. Let's go to the God that's higher than anything by it and anybody else that can move in our situations. God, we lift our hands this morning in faith to you. Asking God that you would touch every need that has been mentioned. God, many of them are physical needs. Some need comfort. But you're the Jehovah Jireh, and you're able to meet each and every one. I pray, God, for every unspoken need that was represented by hand. Whatever the burden is, whatever the circumstance, God, I pray your authority upon it this morning. I pray your anointing to move and minister as only you can. God, that there would be a testimony, there would be a report of your glory. Father, we pray this morning the authority of you. God, that you would not be hindered. But there would be a loosening. Oh, there would be a liberty for you to move. God, to anoint and to touch those that are in need this morning. And we praise you for it. Oh, we praise you for it. We glorify you for it. We worship you this morning. Knowing, God, you're on that throne and you're in control. Knowing you're in control. We praise you this morning. We lift you up. We lift you up. Let the church say amen. Uh, Y'all's quiet. I know it's cold, but the blood should be pumping pretty good by now. Everybody say amen. Amen. Better. Y'all may be seated. We are entering our last week of our corporate fasting and prayer. So if you've made a commitment, please honor that. And let's see what all God's doing throughout this time we've set aside. Which means on Tuesday there will be no corporate prayer, but Wednesday our midweek service will be a corporate prayer service. So come and be a part of that at 7. And I don't know if you actually read your bulletin, but if you do, there's something on there for Thursday called the New Things Recovery at 6. And to the best of what I've been able to gather, I believe that's not going to actually happen. So we will give you more information either tonight or Wednesday. So If you're going to pencil it in your calendar, put it in pencil. Don't put it in pen. And then next Sunday is a Sunday school blast. So if you're part of that, come and be be in the midst of it. If our ushers would come, we're going to take up our offering. Our offering scripture comes from Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 17. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you has God blessed you let's pray over this offering Father we ask that you anoint that which is given this tithe and this offering God as we give and commit into your word in obedience God not because we just want to obey but because we are grateful and thankful of how you provided our needs bless and anoint each and every giver in Jesus name
awesome. I was thinking driving in. I'm not a worrier. I get concerned about things, but I don't worry. And I think it's because I know my God is awesome. And since he is so awesome, he can do anything that I need him to do in my life. Anything is possible. We're going to sing and close out. That'll be our last song. Anything is possible if you know Jesus. Jesus is in this place. I came to 
is here. Hallelujah. If you need a healing, the God who heals is here this morning. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Brother Milam, I was worrying a little bit there, and then it just shifted, brother. Amen. It just shifted. Hallelujah. I don't care if it's cold outside. Hallelujah. Come on. We are the people of his name. It don't matter the climate. It don't matter the weather. We came to have church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe something powerful is going to happen in this house this morning. Hallelujah, when the church begins to fast and pray. Hallelujah. There is something about fasting and prayer. That things that will not move begin to move. Uh, obstacles begin to move. Hallelujah. Barriers begin to move. Come on. Hallelujah. The enemy's trying to fight with this weather. But he don't control it. And it's going to shift. It's going to get warmer. And I can guarantee you this house is going to be filled. Hallelujah. This house is going to be full in 2024. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of John. I'm going to be preaching from the book of John this morning. I've spent a lot of time in John. And I'm not leaving until God kicks me out of the book of John. <laughs> now understand something. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. We say the gospel of John, but it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not about John. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 12, I'm going to read two verses to you. The light of the world, then Jesus spake unto them. Verse 12, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And when he says life right there, he's not just talking about your physical life, but he's talking about your spiritual life and eternity with him forever that you walk on the streets of gold in heaven with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He's going to give you eternal life. Go to verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. And I want to preach to you this morning this thought confronted by his deity. Confronted by his deity. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Just set your Bibles down. Jesus, we thank you this morning, God. We thank you, God. It might be cold outside your temperatures, but you are in this house. Hallelujah. You have come in this house, God, and the people of your name are here, and we are ready, God, to experience you. Hallelujah. In all of your fullness this morning, we are ready, God, to have church. Hallelujah. Speak to us, God. Speak to us this hour, God. Hallelujah. 2024 is going to be different, God. Something has shifted in the atmosphere, Jesus. It is closer to your coming. Hallelujah, your coming is upon us. Hallelujah, we feel you. We feel all of heaven. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to try to calm down here a little bit just to deliver this, but uh, confronted by his deity. And, and I'll say this, 2023 was a really difficult year. Especially for our Spanish, 2023, the first couple years were a honeymoon. <laughs> you plant the church and it's a honeymoon. And then in 2023, problems begin to happen. And the enemy begins to stir up stuff. And in and, and November, I was dealing with a spirit of discouragement. And I shook myself out of that. God helped me. And I preached on December 3rd. And it's been a long time since I've been up here. Hallelujah, and, and as a preacher, you can get out of rhythm, right? And December came, and time off work, right? And no service, and Christmas, and all of a sudden before, you know it, like, what's going on? 
And pastor texted me, say, let's go out to eat. And it was after Christmas, amen. So I go out to eat with pastor, and he begins to talk. He begins to put stuff in my spirit. And shoo, I could feel something shift. And it's time to shake this off. Hallelujah. And I could feel it begin to shift. And all of a sudden in 2024, I could hear the Lord say, let's go. And my wife said to me tonight, Bobby, every time you get down and it gets hard, I'm going to say to you, let's go. Hallelujah. So I say to you, church, today in 2024, let's go. It is the year of victory. Hallelujah. I'm asking you, as you are confronted by his deity this morning, are you willing to go all in? Are you willing to lay it all down and say 2024 is the start, to, hallelujah, of what I want from God? And he's going to begin to move barriers. He's going to begin to remove limits. But what that's going to take is that you are confronted with his deity. You are confronted by the fact that he stares at you in your face and he says, I am God. Will you believe me? Will you trust me? Will you submit to me? Will you obey me? Because I am not just your healer. I am not just your genie in a bottle, but I am God. Hallelujah. In John 7... I just want to lay some context here because as I begin to, I know, I know, tell me about it. You got your Bible plan, right? <laughs> but what happens if God begins to speak to you and then you skip over it because you got to finish your Bible plan and you skip over it and you skip over it and he said, hey, I'm still back here. See, I was that way, but I said, something's got to change. Something's got to shift. Maybe some of you, it's time you slow down in the word of God and say, what is he saying to me right here? So I became confronted by his deity. And he said, I am God. And I want to show you something in the book of John. But see, we move on. Because we don't trust him. We don't have enough faith at times. And we miss what he's trying to speak into our spirit. And as I'm reading through the book of John, it comes to a screeching halt in chapter 7 and chapter 8. All these miracles that Jesus does in the book of John, you have the prologue in chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And as oneness Pentecostals, how much we get fired up over that. Hallelujah. But Jesus confronted. And he, it comes to a screeching halt. And the Pharisees, his people, his own Jewish people, insult him and attack him and come after him. So let me give you a little context here. 7 verse 2. Now the, G, the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. So, you have the feast of the Passover in the spring, right? And you have the feast of Pentecost in the summer. And then you come to the fall festivals, the feast of trumpets, and the day of atonement. And then all of a sudden, the feast of tabernacles. And there's a couple things that they would do at the feast of tabernacles. And there is a powerful illustration that God wants to show us here because it's not about just him being the light of the world it's not about him just bringing you out of darkness and now you have this great light but it's about he wants to be your God and when he wants to be your God he is asking for submission he is asking for obedience Hallelujah, he can bring you out of darkness. He can give you a great life. But if you're not willing to submit and you're not willing to obey him, then he cannot be your Lord. So even here, Jesus' brothers, they don't believe who he is. Verse 3, his brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. 
listen to this, for neither did his brethren believe in him. We're talking about James that would become the pastor in Jerusalem and write the book of James. He didn't, the light of the world, the God of heaven is standing right in front of him. He grew up with the God of heaven and he does not even believe who he is. Come on, don't allow your spirit to grow dim. That he stands right in front of you and he begins to speak to you from his word and you just glance over it and you just glance over it. I got to move on, God. I got to move on because you're not willing to submit to his voice. You're not willing to submit to where he wants to lead you and take you. What has Jesus said? Then Jesus said unto them, my time is not yet come. But your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. Verse 10, but when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast. Not openly, but as it were, in secret. God is saying, you are confronted by my mandate. And do you need to broadcast everything you do? It is time to walk in the secret place. As Brother Rex began to speak, the secret place with the Lord, and the Lord will begin to move. But you have got to submit to his deity. Hallelujah. And his deity confronts you this morning and said, will you move, hallelujah, into the secret place and have fellowship with me so that I can be your God and not just your healer, not just your deliverer, not just give you bread, not just give you material things, not just give you what you need, but I can also be your God. But it's going to take... Submission. So when you begin to study out the Feast of Tabernacles, and here's what I'm going to say. So I was supposed to preach this message a little earlier, right? I went through a little health battle with an ear infection. But it's still good because there's still people that have Christmas lights up. <laughs> We're almost to February, and they still got Christmas lights. Well, guess what? In December, I really like Christmas lights. I like to go see the lights. And I went down to the Ark Encounter and saw the lights and, and uh, had a great Christmas Eve. My brother-in-law, Brother Felix, he made Ponde Hamon on Christmas Eve. And as we would say in Spanish, he wasn't pichirde. He didn't just put a little ham, he put a lot of ham on there. <laughs> and then we went out, there was this house in Springboro and they had... 20 minute light show and it was awesome and I, I love Christmas lights and then I didn't get to go to all the lights that I wanted to see but I'll tell you what, after December 25th take your lights down I'm ready for the new year hallelujah I'm ready for the new year and we came in this place on New Year's Eve and in 10 years that I've been here, that was the greatest New Year's Eve service that we have ever had. There was a move of God in this place. And even on the way to that service, I told Mary Faye, I said, something's in the air. You can feel it. You can feel it tonight. And we come in here, and there were some awesome testimonies. Right, Sister Glenda? Awesome testimonies. And God's spirit began to move. And I said, oh my, this is a sign of things to come. And then what happens? The snow comes and the cold temperatures <laughs> and all that momentum, right? But we're going to get that momentum right now. We're going to get it back because it's not going to stay cold. Hallelujah. But here, and I'm going somewhere, in the Feast of Tabernacles, there were two things that happened. The priest would go down to the pool of Siloam, the libation of water. And they would begin to take water out of the pool of Siloam. And they would carry it back to the altar. And they would pour that water out. And what was to symbolize to them? Hallelujah. That God poured water from the rock. And he took care of them in the wilderness. But what happens in John 4? Jesus meets the woman at the well. 
And he said, if you drink of that water, you're going to thirst again. But I have come to give you rivers of living water. Hallelujah. And Jesus, God himself that created the heavens and the earth shows up and says, you're putting your trust in what I did all those years ago. The libation of water and the priests are carrying the water. But he said, I got a new water. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh and you're going to be filled with my spirit. Hallelujah. And I'm going to give you new life. And a water that you'll never thirst again. Amen. then what else happened? You're probably thinking, well, well, where in the world is he going with the Christmas lights? They would light up the temple. The illumination of the temple and the candelabras would be lit up in the inner court, in the, in the court, in the temple. And all of Jerusalem could be seen from miles away. The Feast of Tabernacles. But is that all that's coming to an end. And we say, take your Christmas lights down. And as the lights of the temple, and it's getting ready to go out, all of a sudden, the light of the world appears. (laughs) He says, you believe in that light because it was a pillar of cloud. And a fire by night that guided them. But he said, I'm not going to do it anymore that way. I'm going to fill you with my spirit. And you're going to become a light unto this world. Hallelujah. And the light of the world confronts them with his deity. And what happens in chapter 7 and chapter 8? They can't deal with it. They can't handle Jesus. And they even say he's going to kill himself. And he's going to commit suicide. They say he's got a devil. What happens when you get on fire for God? People can't handle it. But don't fight him. When people get on fire with God, say, brother, I want that fire you got. I'm going to get on fire with you. Hallelujah. I'm going to get on fire with you. Hallelujah. Because I want to win the world. I want to change this world for Jesus. The light of the world shows up. Hallelujah. I I encourage you to study the book of John. In chapter 2, Jesus does his first miracle. And Mary, his mother, is confronted by his deity. Chapter 2, in the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine, Jesus. What's Jesus say? I, I, I'm taken back by this. Jesus say unto, unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Jesus says that to his mother. But what is it? Mine hour is not yet come. Jesus knew, Woman, if I do this miracle, it's going to begin. Because there's going to be people that believe. And then there's going to be people that deny me. And Jesus knew and he knew he, what, he didn't want it to be his time yet. But he begins to do this miracle. And think about those guys. If you listen to Brother Tisdale, and he's preaching. Those guys had never seen a miracle. But what do they do? They go fill up the water pots. They had never seen a miracle. But Jesus, might tell, whatever he says to you, do it. They go and fill it up. What about those guys? Can, can you be faithful in the waiting? You're waiting for the miracle this year. But can you fill up the water pots while you're waiting? Can you fill up the water pots while you're waiting? So what does that teach us? That they were confronted by his deity. And what did they do? They didn't choose to disobey. They didn't choose to be rebellious. But they submitted to God himself, robed in flesh. And they filled up the water pots. And the miracle came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's not about the miracle. It's not about the water into the wine. But it's he wants to be your God. And you might need that miracle today. And I hope you get that miracle. We're going to pray that you get that miracle. But what I really hope is when you leave, that you are submitted to him. And you have obeyed him. And he is your God. John 3, I promise you, I'm not going through the whole book of John today. (laughs) Nicodemus shows up. 
He's a Pharisee. He comes by night. He's scared. Maybe they'll find out. Maybe he believes in Jesus. And he calls him rabbi. And he says, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Folks, he's more than a teacher. If you've come here and you think he's a good man, and you just want to hear a little bit about him, and you want him to give you this or give you that, there's more to him than that. That he is not just a teacher. He's not just the sustainer of life and the bread of life. He doesn't just give you livers, rivers of living water to change you. But what he gives you, hallelujah, is that he is God himself. And when he showed up in flesh, we are confronted by his deity. And just as the Pharisees were confronted by his deity, you are going to be confronted by his deity today. And he will stand at that altar and he says, I know you need a miracle and I can do that. But can I be your God? Are you willing to obey me? Are you willing to submit to me? Are you willing to lay down? Hallelujah, those things that keep conflicting in your spirit. And you have that conflict in your spirit because you can't lay it down. The woman at the well in four says, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. She was confronted by his deity. And he stands in front of her, and she doesn't know who he is. And Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. He appears. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. I want to read one more scripture in John 18. Verse 4 says, Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto him, I am he. And Judas also which betrayed him stood with them. As soon then, as he said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground they confronted his deity and they didn't believe who he was and they went backwards and some of you right now are going backwards because you've been confronted by his deity time after time after time and you don't truly believe he is who he says he is you don't really truly believe that he's the God of this universe hallelujah because you want this and you want that but it's time to believe he is who he says he is in his word hallelujah and he wants to be more than just your sustainer of bread hallelujah man cannot live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God he is more than just to give you things he is more than a bank account he is more than material possessions he is more than just your healing oh I know you might need a healing but he is God himself he's the mighty God in Christ Woo. Come on, oneness Pentecostals. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Woo, he was the true light. Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. For, but as many as received him. Listen to this. To them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. See, 
walk around and maybe you tell people, I'm a Christian. Maybe. Maybe you don't. But you know what? You're more than just a Christian. You're a son of God and a daughter of God of God. You are from a royal line. Hallelujah. And you may have lived a crazy life. You may have a crazy past. You may have had a very sinful past. You may have had a past of debauchery and alcoholism and drug addiction and all kinds of immorality. But the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is here today. And He stands in front of you. And He confronts you with His deity. And He says, I am God. And I can give you rivers of living water. I can change your life. But I can also give you a heavenly destination I'm trying to close here but the word of God is so powerful the word of God if you will just seek out the word of God please when he stop, when he stops and he says slow down don't just skip over it don't just skip over it I got to complete it all. I, I was just like that. I got to complete it all. <laughs> do you want accomplishment? Or do you want God himself to show up and talk to you? Hallelujah. In the beginning, God. See, that same God that's being preached in John's letter right there. That same Jesus that shows up in the temple when the lights are coming down. And take your Christmas lights down. That same Jesus shows up says, I'm the light of the world. Guess who he was? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. That same God now shows up in the temple in flesh. And he says, I am he. Before Abraham was, I am. Hallelujah. Oh, Moses, he longed for the day that we live in. Moses longed to see him. Hallelujah. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Read the scriptures. He says, Before Abraham was, I am. I am he. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Oneness Pentecostals, we have a truth in the oneness of God. Hallelujah. Don't you sell this truth for anything. There is nothing worth this great and precious truth that he is one. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And his name is Jesus. He's all through Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. From Gen Hey, Moses. Hallelujah. Hey, end time church. I'm the same God. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He lives and he's in this place. And he can change your life today. The Lord is my light, yes. But what does Psalm say? He's also my salvation. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Come on, in 2024, don't miss the house of God. Because he confronts you here, service after service, with his deity. And he says, last week's not good enough. Because this week a new trial come. This week the enemy's coming this way. But I am God. And I can deliver you from that. Don't miss the house of God. Be in the house of God. Every time the doors are open, and I know we're sick, and the weather, and I was sick, and, but we got to be in this place because this place is going to be shaken in 2024. There's going to be miracles happen in this place. 
But more than the miracles, there are drug addicts and prostitutes and people in sin and addiction that are going to come in this house and they're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And they're going to become sons and daughters of God. You know what happens in John chapter 8? The woman caught in adultery. They drag her into the temple. The self-righteous. Look at her, the sinner. And they drag her and they throw her in the feet. And they try to catch Jesus in a trap. What's Jesus going to do about this? And they all lay down their stones. They walk out because neither do I condemn you to go and sin no more. And what they don't understand is the power of that story is Jesus didn't approve of what she did. But he had mercy and he had grace. Church, every soul, I'm telling you, when they come in and you're confronted by his deity, the God of heaven is watching you. They say, how will you treat them? And when they come in and they kneel at this altar, have mercy on them. Oh, when that saint of God doesn't do what they're supposed to, have mercy on them. Come on, Pastor Heideball has had mercy on me. And I'm thankful for that. Because I wasn't always doing what I was supposed to do. But he never gave up on me. One meeting or one dinner with your pastor can change your life. Don't run away from your leadership. Don't run away from your pastor. But get confronted by his deity today and say, Pastor Heideball, I want to get a hold of your vision for 2024. It's not easy. It's a lot of work, saints. It's a lot of work. But are you willing to do it? Let me read just a couple of more scriptures and we're going to close. In Colossians, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us to meet, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. How many of you have been delivered from the power of darkness? And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible. Amen. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Uh, He is the body Uh, He is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Hallelujah. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Hallelujah. The God of this universe, Jesus Christ, stands before you today and he confronts you with his deity and he says, can I be your God today? Or do you walk back out those doors the same way? He's just a good man. He was a good rabbi. Yeah, maybe he was a prophet. Yeah, I say he's the bread of life. Yeah, I'm not. He's taking care of my needs. But he confronts you with his deity. And more than just a miracle. He says, can he be your God? And what that means is are you going to submit to him? And you're going to lay down what's conflicting you. And you're going to do what he's asked you to do. And you're going to say, I'm getting off the bench. And I'm going to get in the game. And I'm going to be a part of this. I'm going to close with this story because that's, it happened on New Year's Eve. On the way to the watch night service, the Lord took me back. And I remember going into my senior year of playing college football. And a few of our teammates, and we came up short that year. And we went to the game that would decide who would play in the conference championship. 
and when we were driving that night, something was special in the air. And we were talking, we're going to do this. We're going all in. Then I broke my leg, tib and fib, career over. And I laid on that field, almost in shock and in pain. He said, I have something greater for you. I have something greater for you. But I was reminded in that same feeling, and that was earthly. But New Year's Eve, it was spiritual, and it was heaven, and I could feel the breath of heaven that night, and I could feel Jesus saying, I am coming soon, I am coming soon, and this is going to be the greatest year of your revival, because I am coming soon. Come on, don't doubt Jesus, because as it gets closer, we're going to feel it more powerfully, and if you miss the house of God, you miss out, because this place is going to be an awesome place this year. Hallelujah, you can't do it at home. I know you two preachers are great. I listen to YouTube preaching is great, but there's nothing like the preaching of your pastor in this house. There's nothing like being at the altar. Yes, you can sit in your recliner at home and take in the Word of God, and that's awesome. We need extra preaching, but there's nothing like the house of God, and He's calling you to come and submit at this altar to Him and let Him be your God. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. My goodness. <laughs> we got to work, saints. If you're going to be confronted by his deity, what's he do at the book of John? What's he do at the end of the book of John? Read it. He asked Peter three times, do you love me? Because if you love him, then he's going to tell you this, go feed my sheep. Go to work. In 2024, Let's go. Hallelujah. Get off the bench and get in the game. It is time to be all you can be for Jesus. Hallelujah. Be all you can be for Jesus this year. Hallelujah. Music team, let's begin to behold. Can we just praise him in this place? This altar is open. Come pour it out to him. You are confronted by his deity today. And he is more than a miracle worker. He is more than a teacher. He is more than the bread giver but he is God in the flesh he is God himself and he's crying out to you today give it all over to him today in Jesus name
the cross I surrender my life I'm in awe of you yes I'm in awe of you and where your love red red in my sin washed white I owe all to you I owe all to you at the cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in awe of you, yes, I'm in awe of you, where your love red, red, in my sin washed white, I owe all to you, I owe all to you, and here my hope is found, here on holy ground. open wide here you save my life here I bow down here I bow down here my hope is found here on holy ground here I bow down here I bow down here arms open wide is found here on holy ground here I bow down yes here I bow down and here arms open wide I'm in awe of you, I'm in awe of you, where you love red, red, in my sin washed white, I owe all to you, yes I owe to you. Sick in body uh, and with these.
these temperatures. It's so cold. So those that are unable to make it, hallelujah. Though we have a lot of needs right now, so keep people in your prayers. Hallelujah. Let's close out in prayer. Jesus, thank you for this morning, God. Thank you for this day, God. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We magnify you, Lord. And we thank you for what you've done in this place and what you're going to do tonight, God. And when we come back in here tonight, God, that you'll pour out, God, your spirit, God, on every soul that comes in this house, God, and people would be born of your spirit. Hallelujah. Born of the water and born of the spirit. In Jesus' name, God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name.